Uh, at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Glavin, who will be speaking about uh, the block schedule. Okay. All right. So, um, really quick, before I get into the block schedule, I know it's going to be like kind of tough to follow that in music, and I will try <laughs> to make this as entertaining as possible. It is going to take a little bit because it's kind of something new, but I put together this presentation to help out. Um, the first thing that I would say is it, getting to see all that what we've been doing at the high school, it's really nice because it actually ties into this. Because one of the things that we have going on here that's really great at Riverside is the ability to try some of these new things that are happening. We have a lot of our like central office where they're open for allowing us to do a lot of stuff that maybe in other places they wouldn't be. So when we had the idea earlier this year for a community service honor court, they're like, do it. When we said we wanted to do a STEM speaker series, they were like, do it, go for it. When uh, me and Pete were sitting in Melissa's office and we started talking about possibly looking at the schedule. And Jim walked in and they were like, she's like, Jim, they're thinking about looking at the schedule again. He goes, do it. He goes, show me what you got. So that was kind of where it was. And what's nice is, is that they give us the ability to come up with some stuff, bring it to them, and if it makes sense, if it makes sense and it's good for the students, they're very receptive to it. And that's always kind of the big thing that we look at. So with in line with everything that kind of happened earlier this year, we ended up going towards this block schedule. Um, this has been an extensive process. I can tell you now, you know, when we first got started doing this, one of the things that you hear is like in education, it's hard to kind of get things going, push things through a little bit. Um, I can tell you that this took, I would say, probably hundreds of hours to get this to happen for multiple people. But with everybody working together, we were able to come together with the staff, with the teachers, and everybody kind of decided and chose that this was something that was good for the students, so it's something that we were, gonna, we were willing to try. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And I'll kind of give you a real quick overview of everything. So scheduling goals, what happened, and this started back in November. We went to Melissa, went to Jim, talked about possibly bringing the scheduling committee together again. Um, I've been in the district for three years, but I know there's people that have been telling me for the past 10, 12, 13 years, we don't like this existing schedule. We would really like something else. You know, it's kind of a little bit cumbersome. There's a lot of period breaks. There's eight classes, but 11 periods. There's a lot of downtime that was kind of, it was, just wasn't good for the students, wasn't good for the staff. So we started looking at it um, and we formed a committee. So we had the scheduling committee that was composed of administrators. It also had um, teachers on it as well. So we had four and four so that we can come together, kind of work on it, make sure we look at all the different sides. Um, our goal was to outline the possible benefits for the students, administration, and staff of alternative schedules and then also review the feasibility of implementation within the Riverside Local School District. So when we're looking at these schedules, we also have to look at the fact of how does it fit with us? How does it work for our district, for our students? We can't just look at models and say, is that right or not? We had to see it apply to us. So why change? And I kind of touched uh, a little bit on this. Our concerns cited with the current schedule included um, the number of student and teacher transitions during the school day. Right now there's eight transitions. So eight times every day we have 1,800 students walking around this quarter mile on campus, which is a lot, okay? And it's for six minutes every time. We also had uh, increased student class loads on a daily basis. So you have kids that, some kids that have six, seven, even eight classes every day, which I think that that would be overwhelming for any of us if you think about that, that many different subjects. We also have increased uh, teacher class loads also on a daily basis. You have staff members that were teaching six or even seven classes in some cases on a daily basis. So they're dealing with uh, up to 150 kids. And then we also had shortened classes that limited the ability of staff to delve deeper into topics. So pretty much because of all these class changes and all these classes, you could only have a class for 38 minutes or on average it was around like 42 minutes. So when you take into account class starts, you take attendance, you get everything going with them. By the time you started revving up, you had to start bringing it down. So it was almost time to end class. So what is the AB block? So the first thing is we're moving to a block schedule and we're moving to specifically an AB block schedule. So an AB block schedule has the following characteristics. It's four 90 minute periods in a day. Instead of our existing eight, or 11 periods, we got four periods. Kids are gonna take up to four classes a day. That's it, no more. And each class is gonna be 90 minutes. Now, there are two forms of a block schedule. There's 
a true block schedule, which is a four by four, where you take four classes one semester, you take four the next semester, and then there's the AB block. AB for us is what for our district was financially feasible and it also worked for our students and we feel it met the goals that we were trying to get at. And what that does is an AB is, it's basically an alternating day. So you still have all of your eight classes, but you have some of them on one day, which would be an A day, and then you have the other classes on the B day. And I have some good examples in here that I'm going to show you guys that will kind of have a visual so you can see exactly what it looks like. But once I show it, it will make sense. Um, we also have three 30-minute lunches, which we currently have now, and those are built into the schedule. Current area schools that utilize a form of block scheduling include Perry High School, you have Madison, Kenston, Twinsburg, and then also Notre Dame Cathedral Latin. So with how our schedule is going to look, um, oh, you know what? Hey, here, you guys don't even have to take notes. Oh, God. Hang on one second, sorry. There you go. So you guys have these. And we just take some notes on them. It's just so much easier. Yes, it is. You guys can look, you guys can look at them tonight if you want. Thank you. You can, tomorrow morning even, <laughs> during the presentation. <laughs> okay. So right now, this is what our schedule is going to look like within our current structure. We still have the same start time as 7.20. We still have the same end time as 2.25. Um, it looks a little bit confusing, but all you really got here is, is you basically have the four blocks, one, two, three, and four. What you're, going, what you're going to notice that the third block is longer. It's essentially about 126 minutes. What that does is, is it has the third block has your 90-minute class, and it also has a 30-minute lunch that's built into it. Okay, so that's why it's a little bit different. Go ahead, click on the next slide. So example of lunch blocks, so one of the things people say is they'll be like, how does it work with lunch in the third block? What does that mean? So there's a couple different scenarios. So essentially, you have three different lunch periods, A, B, and C. That's pretty much probably how we'll designate them for the students. And there's a few different ways we'll do it. So if you eat lunch A, what would happen is, is at the start of third block, you'd go to lunch for 30 minutes. You then have a six minute transition where you then go to your class for 90 minutes, okay? Eat for 30, go to class for 90. If you're in group C, you go ahead and you have class for 90 minutes, have a six minute transition, and then you go ahead and you have your lunch for 30. The middle section right here, there is gonna be like a cut in between. So what happens is, is you'll have a class for 30 minutes, you'll go to lunch for 30 minutes, and then you have class for an hour, okay? I know that cuts it up a little bit, but mind you, that hour is still more than the current time that they have now on a daily basis, which is, which is 42 minutes in most cases. It's full 18 minutes more. We talked about maybe going to four lunches, but we wanted to do is limited. We wanted to limit the amount of classes that had those kind of transitions in them. So by going with three, we limited it to only 30% of them. And mind you, when we talk about these transitions, we would obviously not have things like gym class or uh, lab sciences where it's going to cut up the middle of a lab. We would not use them in those. We do ones that would be more conducive to taking a break in between. Okay. So this is kind of just so the visualization I was talking about. So we're probably going to go with something like we're going to have things that's probably going to be instead of A and B, it's going to be black and gold. So you'll either have a black day, you'll have a gold day. It's very easy to understand. We could put it on calendars and it's going to have colors up to let everybody know. There's a little bit of training. There is. Um, <clears throat> so the way it's going to work is you alternate every other week, okay, to make sure that you have classes. So if you had, if the gold is B, one week you're going to have it on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And then the very following week you only have it on Tuesday and Thursday. So you go 3-2, 3-2, and you just keep flip-flopping. You don't want to keep it the same because of holidays and certain things that happen. It's better to alternate it like this. And when we researched this, we went to schools, we talked to uh, Twinsburg, who has an A-B block, and we said, what, what you know, pitfalls did you have? What did you run into? And they were like, this is how you want to run it. You don't want to do this. When we talked to other schools, they talked about the holidays. Um, so it made a lot of sense. Okay, so a sample monthly schedule. Mind you, this is not the actual schedule. I just wanted to give you a sample of what it's going to look like when we send it out to the parents. Okay, we'll have something next year that there will be a calendar for them for them, which will basically have, for October, let's say, you know, black, gold, black, gold, black. It'll have the dates on there. If we want to do, you know, things like logos to help people, there's, there's a bunch of different ways that we can help get everybody on board with this, okay? When uh, Mr. Liazzo talked about those TVs that we have, so those are actually, they're actually signage TVs. So one of the things that we can do is we can input announcements on there. We could put on there black day, gold day, things that let everybody aware what's going on. And with most of the kids with social media, 
a lot of them, as much as sending out a tweet, is going to let them know and remind them. I'll just be honest, it will. Okay. So here's where we get a little bit technical, which is why we're looking at it. So we're telling you we're going to this, and we're saying, all right, you're telling me you're alternating days here a little bit. All right, I'm still thinking about it. So why was this so overwhelmingly such a good decision that we thought we should be pursuing this? And what's going to happen is the first thing is we've got to look at our existing schedule, and you've got to look at the AB. So with right now, you have daily transitions at 8. So what I have here is I have our current schedule. I have what we're going to be moving to next year. So you have the eight transitions, student uh, daily class time. Right now, currently, you have 347 minutes of instructional time. You have time in transition. Here's the big thing that we're doing by moving to a class. <coughs> right now, our kids are spending 48 minutes a day walking in the halls transitioning. <coughs> so almost an hour a day is them going, 1,800 kids moving around the halls. By moving to a block, we cut that in half to 24 minutes. And what that does is that 24 minutes then gets immediately absorbed by instructional time. So we still have the same lunch times. Teacher planning lunch time basically stays the same. Opportunity to earn credits also stays the same. Okay, and we, we have a lot of benefits with the classes and things like that. And duration of the day stays the same. So our time stays exactly the same. It's still 425 minutes. So one of the things that we look at in our district, and this is happening everywhere, is that we can't change the length of the day. I can't change how much time we have with the kids. We can't change how much time, we, how many people we have, or there's financial limitations. But we can change what we do with the time that we have. And that's what we're looking at. And that's what we tried to do here to have a positive impact for the kids. Go ahead. So, to truly understand the benefit, I'm going to go ahead and break down some numbers here of total instruction time on a weekly basis. So when we're looking on a weekly basis, now I got to put up two things here because we have this PLC day on Wednesdays. It's a delayed start. If everybody knows it, it's like, hey, that's the day the traffic's not as bad, which is good. Um, and what you have, but it changes the numbers that we have in terms of instruction time. We tried to be as specific and as accurate as possible because we want to make sure that everybody has an apples to apples comparison that's not sort of right, kind of right. It's on. So. What happens is, is you have Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, which is a certain type of schedule. With that, during, with that normal schedule, you have 347 minutes of instruction time, which over a week adds up to 1,388 minutes. You then have, on that Wednesday schedule, which is 311 minutes, essentially you lose some time for the, the PLC, the um, teacher collaboration. So you have 311 minutes on that day. You add it up and you get on a weekly basis, our students are getting 1,699 minutes of instruction per week, okay? So you got that roughly 1,700. Now go ahead and click to the next slide. So by switching to an AB block schedule and changing how many transitions we have and how we're utilizing the existing 425 minutes, we were able to dramatically increase student instruction time without, change, without costing anything. So what we go to is, and again, I have the PLC day that's still good. This, this, we get this big increase while still allowing that collaboration time because we value that with the teachers, having that time to work together to make sure that they're looking at different strategies. So our time goes up to, on student daily class time, it goes up to 371 minutes on the four days of the week, which is a total of 1,484. On the PLC day, it goes up to 335. So here's the big takeaways. That means by going to an AB block schedule, we have over 120 minutes or two hours more of instructional time per week by going to the schedule. That equals out to, if you want to go ahead and extrapolate some data, you can go ahead and put 120 minutes. You go by the 36 weeks around that we have in our system, you have 4,320 minutes divided by 60. That's over 72 hours a year of additional instructional time without changing a single minute of the duration of the day the students are there. I mean, that's a lot. That's <laughs> noticeable. And in terms of what that breaks down to per course, if you're wondering how does science or how does like a social studies class benefit, they end up having an additional nine hours more per year per course. So basically we're just doing more with what we have, with the time that we have allotted. Okay. So benefits of the AB block schedule at Riverside. We have the, the increased instructional time, which is 72 hours per year, nine hours per course. We have the flexibility for innovative teaching strategies. Examples we can add would be technology integration, collaboration, etc. One of the big things we heard when we talked to all these different school districts, and we had teachers come in, we had panel discussions, what they all talked about is, is I need more time. 
and with this time I can do more. So what you get a lot of is you get a lot of project-based learning, which is what a lot of the research is telling us now. Well, it's hard to do that in a 40-minute class or a 38-minute class, but if you give somebody 90 minutes and they have the ability to teach a material, to work it with the kids, and then have the kids go out on their own, the big thing that the teachers came from a lot of these districts was is that when they teach a lesson, it's able to go full circle. And that was the term that they used a lot. And what they said is that I get to start a concept and I get to wrap it all the way around. That's kind of how it works, and I get to close it. Um, one of the great things that's happening also is, is by the changing of this schedule, by going to an AB, it actually allots us the ability to do two things. Number one is offer additional courses, and number two is also make some classes smaller, okay? So just some of the classes that we're gonna be offering next year, or that we're looking at offering, that we currently do not have, is we're gonna be offering STEM Inquiry 1 and 2. So we're gonna have STEM Inquiry for eighth graders. We're also gonna have one for ninth and 10th graders. We're gonna have speech and debate, which is probably gonna be in the eighth or ninth grade levels in English. Um, we're adding anatomy and physiology. We're adding forensics. And those are just some of the courses. We're also looking at adding a couple others. So these are things that we currently do not have that now we will be offering next year. This isn't like we're thinking about it, we might do it, we're offering them. That's great. Um, it also helps prepare students for college career readiness. One of the big things is so we don't want to, we try to reach all the different students, but one of the ones we have to look at are there are some students that are looking to go forward towards college. And if you look at an AB block schedule, we will all maybe notice that it is very similar to a college schedule. And that's one of those things that's helping transition them. So when we went to school districts and we talked to students that are on an AB block, what they said is, is that this helped prepare me for what it was going to be like at college. Because I didn't have class every day. I realized that I had a course and I had to learn to study that material and help prep them. So that was what we were hearing from them. That's not me saying it, that's them coming back. The key point to take away from all this is that this option is fiscally responsible because there's no additional funds required. It increases the quality and duration of instruction time and it allows for a 2016-2017 implementation. So this isn't, we're looking two years, three years down the road. We got this within four months, we're putting this in the fall. It makes so much sense. We all got together and agreed that we thought that we didn't want to wait for this. Because one of the, you know, when we looked at it, that was kind of what we decided. Okay, go ahead. So teacher planning, duty. one of the things that someone might just wonder is, so how does the, uh, how's the teacher day affected by this? So teachers will teach three blocks each day, so they'll have three classes instead of right now, they have six classes every day. They'll have three each day. Um, block three already has the teacher lunch built in. This is really nice. So basically when your kids go to lunch, you go to lunch. Kind of think like elementary school, really. It's very similar to that. Um, and then the fourth block for the teachers is gonna be 45 minutes planning, which is similar to what they exist and have, and then 45 minutes a duty period, which is also something that we currently have. Okay. All right, so again, the advantages to the AB block schedule would be that the teachers have to prepare for three classes a day as opposed to six classes every day. Um, you're looking at 60 kids a day as opposed to 120, 150 kids a day. Um, students only have four classes a day. I mean, I'll just be honest. You told me how to take eight classes in a day. That's a lot. That's probably overwhelming because you have eight subjects and eight things of homework every night. So the big thing is when we talked to these districts, what they told us was, the big thing about the AB that they liked was this night I could work on this homework and I knew I had an extra day before it was due. That was with the things that they talked about. These were the advantages they mentioned to us. Um, there's more time for integration of technology in the classroom. So you guys know that next year we're going one-to-one -one with the Chromebooks. Um, this allows the ability to fully integrate those, to really allow that project-based learning, to allow that independent learning, letting students work with it. So that way you can teach a concept, practice it with them, and then let them go off and create with it. And I think that's what our goal is. I think that aligns with what we're trying to get. Um, and then obviously more time for teachers to develop and use different strategies. Going from 40 minutes to 90 minutes, it just allots you a lot more time. Okay, so preparing for the block. It sounds great, that's a lot of time, but it's like, well, okay, how are we like gonna get here? How are we gonna do this? Are we just gonna like give this to us or what? And that's not the case. So one of the things that Melissa has worked extensively on is making sure that we are preparing to go to a block schedule, making sure that people have the resources and the tools that they need to perform the functions that we're gonna be doing. So there's a couple different areas that we have here. So the first one is, you're gonna, so anticipation moving to it, we're implementing the following tools and resources. So for parents, the first thing we're gonna be doing is this PowerPoint. 
as boring as it may be, even though I really like it because I put in hours and hours into it, I do, I enjoy it. Um, this is going to be available online for any parent to look at, for any student to look at. Um, we're also going to be doing a video of either this presentation or one where I'm going to be going to classes talking to students, and I'll kind of mention that in a minute. And we're also going to be sending a letter out to parents. So for the students, what we're going to be doing is, is presentations are to be given in student classes during the month of April and May for all current 7th through 11th graders. So obviously we're not going to talk to the seniors because, sorry guys, you'll leave, man. you don't get to see it. But everybody else who's still here, we're going to talk to everybody on campus. We're going to go to the MOOC. We're going to talk to the 7th graders to make sure that they understand it also. So we'll answer their questions at that point. Usually we can go in during an English class or something around there. All right, so the big one is going to be the staff. How are we going to work? What are we going to be doing to help prepare and make sure that we're ready to move to a block schedule in the fall to add that extra 72 hours? How are we going to do that? So one of the things we're going to be doing is we've already implemented a lot of these. We've already started conducting site visits to schools that utilize the block. So we're allowing staff members. We had all of our department heads, or we offered our department heads to go to schools that currently utilize the block to talk to other department heads, talk to other teachers. Collaboration, not just on a district level, but on a county level. Okay, well, we're actually working with school districts and the resources that they have for our advantage, which is kind of where we want it to be. Um, we have professional development time for curriculum development. So we're obviously going to be giving teachers time during some professional development days to work on their curriculum, to transition it from a 40-minute period to a 90-minute period. We're going to have professional development offering strategies for teaching in the block. Whether that means we'll have different sections where we can talk about integration of technology or differenti differentiation strategies. There's a lot of things that we're working on. And a lot of what we're doing is, is it's not so much, it's easy for us to put this together and say, here's what we're doing, that's what you're getting. What we're doing instead is the big thing that Melissa does is she brings everybody in and she says, what do you need? What can I do to help you? And that's what the big, and that's why, so why we have this here, it's evolving because we're talking with them and we're saying, what do you need? we got to be fluid. We have to be willing to be flexible and meet the needs of what people need. Some of the other things that there's going to be, we have book clubs that are going on that focus on teaching in the block. We're hitting them from a bunch of different angles to give everything resources. So there's book clubs that talk about block, implementing technology. Uh, we've had a panel discussion that had teachers from Madison, Perry, Kenston, Twinsburg. We had them come on out, talk to all of our staff, all the teachers at the high school. Um, and then obviously, this, even though we're implementing this in the fall, our professional development and our learning does not end August, whatever day you guys approve the calendar. This is going to be ongoing, so throughout next school year, through that other school, we're going to keep going into the future with professional development. So that's what I got. I mean, that's pretty, I mean, you know. I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's my presentation on the block schedule. That's awesome.